Heads or tails? Come on, let me through. Heads or tails? Huh. Tails. Told you. Hmm. I never find that as satisfying as I'd imagined. Chin up. There's always next time. I suppose there is. Make yourself ready, Pilgrim. The binding over there is safeguard. Uh, uh, no, no, God damn it! Attention. Attention in the count of five. Count of four. No, no, no. Three. Two. One. Attention. Attention. Irrational Games decided that Bioshock needed something new, and that it needed to be brought back to its roots at the same time. With the new, they brought in a new fantastical setting, a voice to the protagonist, and themes that might be off-putting to some. Bringing the series back to its roots, though, really only required one thing. Get rid of the multiplayer, and focus on making the best single-player experience they could. Bioshock Infinite sets itself up as the best Bioshock game to date, and one of the best games released in 2013 and it's only March. Set in the early part of the 20th century, Bioshock Infinite takes us to an alternate 1912. The Industrial Revolution is in full swing. The United States Civil War hasn't even been over for half a century, and World War I looms on the horizon. Private investigator Booker DeWitt is on a job to find a young woman and bring her back to New York City in order to erase a large debt he has, and through his eyes we're taken on a fantastic journey into the clouds. After a short opening, we're thrust into the world of Columbia, a giant, sprawling metropolis that floats 15,000 feet above the Earth. Founded by the prophet, Zachary Comstock, Columbia is a haven for its followers, free from the Sodom below, where they can live their lives in the way they want to. Booker has been sent here to find Elizabeth, a mysterious young woman, and then find a way to get her to the ground. I don't want to mention any more than that in regards to the story, though, as it is best experience for yourself. Bioshock Infinite is probably the most mature game that I have ever played. And I don't mean that just because of the blood, although there's plenty of that. Columbia! When I say it's a mature game, I mean it deals with topics and issues rarely seen in games and weaves them into the narrative in a way that engrosses you into wanting to learn more about the setting. These topics include racism towards blacks, orientals, and the Irish, religious fundamentalism and the perils of progressive thinking while living in a theocracy, the vilification of labor organizers by the rich employers who wish to keep their stature and way of life to themselves in a very two-class system. And it even brings up, at one point, company towns, where employees were paid in currency that was only good in that town, never allowing them to the opportunity to save up and move on to find other work. While these were ways of life in 1912, many of these issues still exist in some form or another in 2013. But Bioshock Infinite doesn't throw these issues in your face for shock value. Instead, it blends them into the narrative sublimely, in a way that could be seen as social commentary on just how little we've progressed over the last century in some ways. This is why Bioshock Infinite is a mature game. It shows that games can have social value and introspection like books and film. It shows that games can truly be considered art. Of course, all this long-windedness I'm spouting off wouldn't mean anything if the game isn't fun to play. And thankfully it is. While you take in the setting and atmosphere, you're presented with a first-person shooter that does nearly everything right. Tight combat mechanics, great-looking set pieces, interesting dialogue, exploration and puzzle solving, it's all here. One part of Bioshock Infinite that simply cannot be overlooked is the art direction. Irrational Games has delivered a setting that draws you in and makes you want more. Portrayals of early 20th century life are shown throughout in beautiful detail. Looking to the horizon fills your eyes with grandeur that you just can't see in real life. Listening to the various denizens of Columbia and viewing the conditions of life shows you the separation between the haves and have-nots, 
those that Columbia society prefers, and those it pushes down. And it's all done beautifully. Of particular note is the stylization of characters, especially Elizabeth. By going with a more cartoonish look to the people, much more is able to be conveyed without words. Emotions are clearly defined in Elizabeth's face and body language as you play through. Wonder, fear, sadness, joy, anger, it's all able to be seen in a way that much more realistic looking games haven't been able to capture consistently. It helps turn her from being just another character in a game into someone believable in the context of the story and setting. Someone you actually want to help. Booker is the same, though you don't get to see it in his face. Instead, his character is brought about through his voice. His explaining to Elizabeth the hows and whys of their situation, and even some of the things he isn't so proud of in his past. Mix the great art direction with the superb voice acting, and the story comes to life. Irrational Games has set the bar for future interactive storytelling extremely high. Bioshock Infinite's pacing is also spot on. Combat comes at you fast, but there's still time to explore and learn about Columbia, Booker, and Elizabeth. I never felt bored while waiting for something to happen or wished the exposition would just get itself over with to get to the next fight. I felt very satisfied throughout the whole 11 or so hours it took me to beat the campaign. Like previous Bioshock games, guns aren't the only thing that Booker will use. Vigors are the extra natural powers utilized in Bioshock Infinite. They range from the typical fire and electrical powers to summoning a murder of crows to attack your foes. While not every vigor is useful all the time, they allow for some different tactics while playing. The combat feels pretty tight most of the time. It's fast paced and fun, but the enemy AI isn't always the smartest. But what it lacks in intelligence, it often makes up for in sheer numbers at once. Thankfully Elizabeth isn't there to be a glorified escort mission, constantly needing protection while in combat. Instead, enemies ignore her and go right for Booker, and she will offer items during combat such as health, salts to replace vigor energy, or ammo. She can also change aspects of the battlefield in certain areas by bringing in objects through tears in the space-time continuum. They offer cover, ways to move around, or even allies to fight for you. These tears also show that there's something inherently wrong with Columbia and its place in time. Keep a keen ear out and you can hear modern songs done in a turn of the 20th century style, for example. It's the little touches I like. I applaud Irrational Games for removing the multiplayer found in Bioshock 2. While it could be fun, the original Bioshock made its mark on gaming as a fantastic single player experience. Bioshock Infinite shows that a great single player game doesn't need to be saddled with multiplayer aspects. By focusing on the story, art direction, characters, and voices for Infinite, Irrational Games has delivered what might be one of the best single player adventures this close to the end of this console generation and proof that not every game needs to have some sort of online play to be great. While Bioshock Infinite isn't without some minor faults, with the exception of the sometimes dumb AI, they're hardly worth noting, and shouldn't diminish the enjoyment you get when playing through it. So I'm happy to award my first 10 here on Uncle Thursday Game Reviews. 10 doesn't mean perfect, but it does mean that the whole experience is so enjoyable overall that it's not a game to miss. Go get Bioshock Infinite and see for yourself. Do you know something. what that looks like? I don't know. Help me find it! I know that place. That's Albert Fink's house. I I love his music. If he's in there.